Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We have the Zen master. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, Mike Zano. Mike, how are you? Oh, I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Good, good to see you. We've got your partner in crime, the nightcap OG dude buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott Bossman, how are you? I am great, Mark. How are you? Great. Good to see you. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson, who's on a mission, and he is the smartest land geek. Eric, how are you? I was okay until that introduction. I don't know. Uh, you know what, though? What you, cause you, uh, by the way, if your mom's still listening to the podcast, <laughs> she's going to hear that and just nod approvingly and just be like, yep. She's not. She's uh, it's about time somebody gives Eric the credit he deserves. And last but not least, Tate Litchfield, he's a big deal. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate, how are you? Doing well. Honored to uh, be following Eric Peterson, that's for sure. So there are a couple um, inside jokes there for the intro. If you don't know what we're talking about, it's because you weren't at boot camp. And I won't spoil the, the boot camp surprise, but we had a boot camp surprise. And uh, I'm sure in the next few days we'll be uh, publicly showing that surprise. But I'll tell you, like, it's, boot camp was amazing. Um, before we get to our, our topic, I just want to quickly go around. Mike Zana, what was your biggest takeaway for boot camp this, this last weekend? Well, probably uh, when we had uh, one of the past coaching clients, Billy Rogers, on there talking about um, just how he hit his goal in two years after working with Tate and coaching and how just spot on it was. Just that whole that whole grill of geeks with Michaela, who I talked to when she was in college and how she uh, – now she, you know, she's gone through flight school, gone through coaching, and she's crushing the business. That, that whole, just all of that, just seeing people's transformations and seeing how we align the goals and how they accomplish them if they take the action. I just thought it was amazing. Yeah, I, I love that. I love hearing those stories. Um, I love the comment when somebody asked about Billy's investment in coaching. Right. And he's like, well, I make more in a month now than what coaching costs for a year. So yeah, it was worth it. Um, dude, buddy, Scott Bossman, what was your biggest takeaway? Well, I'm going to ride on uh, Zeno's coattails here, but what I love is thinking about uh, kind of the land geeks' future, present, and past. Because I think I thought we had a good representation of that on our call this weekend. We had the vets in the room. We had. Uh, people who had just started coaching or flight school and they're doing sales and doing sales in real time. James Buttermore had three sales this weekend. He just started coaching, but you know, and he went through flight school like a year and a half ago and he, he's killing it. Well, I think, uh, he, I think have, he had four, Scott. Did he have four? Yeah. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah. And then, and then we have a lot of people in the room who are, you know, feeling that excitement that I felt when, when Aaron and I came to our first boot camp, who were just on the verge of, they just knew they were on the verge of something great. So that's that's kind of what I was thinking about. Yeah. Um, Eric, the technician, Peterson. I think that, um, you know, it, it's it's really neat to see, you know, from the beginning of boot camp to the end and kind of those, those maybe doubts and questions just going away and people seeing that it's actually possible. This is a real business model. It works if you just put in the time and the effort. Um, so I think, you know, that's, that's kind of neat to see. No, that's cool. And Tate, how about you? Yeah. I, I mean, the main boot camp was absolutely amazing. It was so fun great to get to know uh, a bunch of new people but uh, the vip room was really really good this time around i mean we went really really deep into some some more advanced topics and it was really cool over the course of the weekend to see people have these light bulb moments where it's like aha i get it i understand what you're saying and and that's why this you know the vip room is special because it's a two-day fully immersive you know conference so to speak you're going to get lectures and then you're going to have the opportunity to execute on that uh, material. And then you present it and you share it and we discuss it and we 
kind of talk about it. And so it was cool to see people share what they thought was a home run and then kind of get brought back down to reality with the group in a kind, loving way that says, no, the group doesn't approve of this decision or they don't think it makes sense or yeah, you're hitting a home run. This is good. Go all in. Right. So I love that aspect of the, uh, the VIP room. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. You know, for me, I mean, I love what all of you said, but you know, speaking of uh, kind and loving, I really felt like the, the community really cared about Rachel and Lucas, Lucas's Marshall's deal. Because, you know, I'm getting in the flow of, of our modules and our flow of boot camp. And I'd see in the chat, hey, how's, how are Rachel and Lucas's ad going? Like people really care. They want to check up on it. You know, do we need to make adjustments to that ad? And um, that really said a lot to me, like just the, the caring in the room and everyone sort of rooting for one another and, um, and just that abundance mentality. Um, you know, I felt it even though you really feel it when it's live, but I felt, I felt it even virtually and just the, the, the intelligent questions, um, as well. And, um, yeah. And then of course, you know, Grill the Geeks is amazing and, and seeing that, that transformation and, you know, those, those questions of like, how has land changed your life? And just, you know, hearing those stories is, is just so, uh, you know, it's, it's emotional. I mean, you feel it. It's, it's, uh, it's really incredible. So let's transition now to our roundtable topic, which is really interesting. So Scott Bossman, why don't you introduce that topic? Okay. So um, as we all know, this business is amazing because we can automate and delegate more than 90% of it. Um, and I guess, uh, now more than ever, because I think people know that, uh, they may feel that, 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 that all needs to happen right away. And, uh, we have some people sometimes, um, going through flight school or maybe going through the toolkit who feel like they need to have a system in place, whether it's for maybe it's a system of delegation or a system of automation before they start the task of marketing, for instance. So instead of, you know, if I have a property in my inventory um, and I'm and I'm going through flexible, instead of going to market that property right away and get on Craigslist and Facebook and Landmoto, which really to market one property on all three of those platforms would maybe take me a half hour. Uh, instead of taking that simple route and going to market that property, people are sometimes, I think, feeling the need to get a system in place uh, before that is the case. And that's uh, what we're going to talk about. I think, I think it's a, it's a I think, good idea. I, I think it's a great idea. Um, I, I hate to do this to the Zen master because I know he's, I know he's going to hang up and he's gonna be like, Laura, <laughs> Mark's picking on me again. I'm always the one who's got to go, go first on these round table topics. How come it can't be someone else? I don't mind. How, how is that accent? And again, I want to apologize to the entire state. I think your accent's getting worse. I thought it was getting better, but there was a little bit of a down there. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to work on it. It's a great question, though, Mark, and I will talk about it, and I won't be upset that I'm first. I think that it reminds me of something that, you know, people say um, someone is uh, busy but not productive. You know, I feel like sometimes people want to do something because it feels good, like, I'm I'm not the most organized guy, but I love backpacks and notebooks, so I have them all over the house. But it doesn't mean I'm organized. I, I just it resembles organization to me. Or, or anyway, so I think if people, it, it can be daunting to do something new, such as advertising. So hey, let me let me work on the system. So it's sort of like almost like skirting it, like you're not doing it because you're doing something else that's far more important, which is preparing to do it. So I, I think that you need to go out and. Just, just execute, put a few ads out. We can definitely, in this business and any business, get caught up in just being busy and not productive. So it's something to watch out for, right? It's an indicator. And I catch myself all the time uh, with that sort of, uh, you know, mentality. And it's, you know, and it's, I think it could happen to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and Mike, I do like to joke around with you. But in all seriousness, though, um, I, I really love that that comment. And, in, you know, and we've talked about this in, in past podcasts why you know I think you have this uh, inherent advantage in business 
and in life um, in just about everything because of your firefighting training, right? The rest of us see danger and we retreat. You see danger and you go in. Right. And there's no hesitation. That being said, you've been trained for it. You have the proper equipment. But when the fire is raging and lives need to be saved, you're not going to hesitate. You're going to go into the fire and take care of it. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to do an autopsy at the end of it and see, okay, how could we have done this better? How could we have done this more efficiently? You know, w did anyone, you know, get hurt? What could we have done better? You, you do that, correct? That's correct. There is, a, you know, we do an after uh, fire. We do like a um, an analysis or a group. We get together and talk about it. But the thing is, you can prepare for these things and, and this relate to the business too. But um, everything's different. It, there's always an adjustment that has to be made as you're going through it. Nothing is the same every time. So to think that you're going to set up right away a system that's going to be infallible for marketing before you even put an ad out. You're almost putting the cat before the horse, right? Let, let's get in there. It's like developing a process to scrub a list before you scrub the list. It's like, well, what are you developing? You're not even 100% sure because you haven't done it yet. Then don't you have to do the task first a few times, get in the mud, get dirty, and 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 really feel the pain and do what you always talk about, right, Mark? Uh, find that pain and relieve it with you know a, a process or a system. So, yeah, you got to get your hands dirty first. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I couldn't imagine you guys huddling up and yeah. be like, let's make sure we get the system <laughs> set up. And then, then, then we'll go in. Yeah, no. Right? Um, Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, first of all, there's a, a saying, money loves speed. So if we acquire a property, we've spent our capital, we need to get it on the market as soon as possible to try and get it sold. So if we're delaying because we're building a system um, to market the property, we're, we're losing time uh, where potentially we could have already sold the property by the time we're done building this process. So that's first. Um, second, kind of as, as Mike was saying, you know, if you um, spend your time building these processes and systems first, there's a very good chance that you're going to have something incorrect in there. You're going to want to make an adjustment once you actually put that process in place, because you're going to realize that, you know, something has to happen before this, or it could be any number of things. It doesn't matter, but you're going to have to make adjustments. So instead, if we do the process manually in this case first, and we continue to do that, then we'll start to see those things that we can systematize, that we can automate, that we can delegate. And from there, we build the system that's hopefully more foolproof and, um, and long lasting because we've been in the process, we know what it is, and now we can solve the, the issue. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tate Litchfield, what are your thoughts? Yeah, theoretical uh, processes, you know, processes that you build on theory are never going to work as good as the ones that are based or built on fact. And how can you that, fix that? Should be a quote. That? I like that. Say, hey, say that again, because that, that's that's it. that's quotable. I'm tweeting smartest, that. Smartest guy in the room. I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah. They got rewind. Sy they got systems rewind. systems built on theory aren't as good or or aren't as effective as systems built on fact. Let's go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End parentheses. I like it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what Mike and everybody else has echoed here today. But, you know, I would argue if you're if you're buying property and you're waiting to bring it to market because you want to have everything in place beforehand, there's a bigger issue at play here. And that's fear. Right. That, that's got to be the only thing that's holding you back is you're you're afraid of somebody asking a question and you not having the response. And the reality is that happens to us all the time, all the time. And what makes a good uh, land investor or entrepreneur or anyone, you know, in business for, for that matter, um, good is their ability to think on their toes, right? Their ability to say, you know what? I don't know if you can have a chicken farm on this property. Let me get back to you, right? Let me, let me look up the answer. Here's the county's phone number. Give them a call. 
they know all the rules on chickens and poultry. I don't, right? So I, I think that the fear of posting your ad, the fear of marketing your property, the fear of sending out an offer, that's the bigger issue here. And once you can get over that fear and you realize sending an offer at the wrong price is not the end of the world. It's not an ironclad agreement. You can walk away from it. You can change your mind. They can change their mind. But, you know, not doing anything because you're afraid of making a mistake is silly. That's that's really my kind of interpretation of this is if you're thinking you need to have it perfect before you take action, you're always going to be behind. And we always joke uh, with my I always joke with my team and I tell them, C's get degrees in the land business. Right. Let's get it done. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we got to get it done. Once we get somebody on the phone, if we make a mistake, we can correct that. We've never made a mistake that we couldn't recover from by simply saying sorry, giving our giving them their money back, correcting the issue, finding a new property. But the key is we're moving our feet. We're moving our feet every single day. Yeah. And, you know, and that applies to everything, Tate. It doesn't just apply to your systems in marketing. Um, how many times do we hear somebody say, oh, I want to put a website up. I want to get the LLC. No, you, th those are nice things to have face that because it's just, it's, you're right. We naturally want to procrastinate things that we're not good at in the beginning. And we start looking for things we, we could be better at and it could be easier, but to face that fear of, you know, I'm not, I'm not even sure what the fear would is necessarily, the but fear of it, success, mate. it could be fear of success. It could be fear of uh, rejection, fear of, um, you know, an ad not getting the results. Uh, but there, so there could be lots of stories that are playing out in people's heads, but it's just a story at the end of the day, when you take action and then you adjust, that's, that's going to move the needle. Um, yeah, that was great. Uh, we'll end with you, dude, buddy, Scott Bossman. He is the man. I am the man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think, you know, in this business, there's a, you want to be effective and you want to be efficient and you need to find a balance with those things. Uh, for me, I will tell you the first two years in this business, I was very effective, but I was not efficient. Um, somebody like Matt Forbes was completely the opposite. He will tell you all day long, listen, I, I tried to build all these systems too soon. I spent a ton of money on all of this stuff too soon. And I didn't start producing until you know, his first two years, Mark will tell you, we're, we're tough. Third year, he starts producing, right? So right. I think there's just a balance you need to find when you're first starting this business. The effective things we do in this business are mailing and marketing. Um, now, mailing, we do that efficiently with LG Pass. We have an amazing tool to do that with LG Pass, and it's not hard to figure that out and to create a system for that. Marketing is just a little bit tougher. But if, you know, like everybody said, uh, money loves speed. You, you need to feel some wins in this business and rinse and repeat and move on to the next deal to feel like this is a worthwhile endeavor, I think. And to see that proof of concept and know that this is going to work over and over and over again. But in order to in order to get it to work the first time, you need to take those steps. So that's those are my thoughts, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just to, to you know, um, take it full circle back to Mike Zano, um, Maybe your house isn't on fire, but your life is on fire. All our lives are on fire. We're never going to get this day again. And so there needs to be that urgency of building wealth. It's You don't want to start tomorrow or the next day. Pretend that your wealth building house is on fire. What are the actions you can take to, to put out that fire? Well, if you're waiting to put systems in place, your house is going to burn. You can do two things at once. You can certainly start putting out ads and at the same time, start creating a system. It's not either or. So I thought it was a really good topic to bring up, Scott Bossman, um, for sure. So hopefully people are finding that that hopeful, useful, and just that little mindset shift and uh, that even just the image of, hey, uh, my wealth building house is on fire. I got to start, I got to put it out so I can start building wealth and, you know, you know, put on your Mike Zeno equipment and go towards it, not away from it and do the necessary actions 
to to put it out. And you know, luckily for you, you you're not going to get hurt, right? Um, in 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 any way. So we've got that luxury. Um, good topic. But now we're at that point of the podcast where we get to ask Eric Peterson for his tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actual for our passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Before we put Eric on the spot, let's give a shout out to our sponsor this week. It's Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building your passive income quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. Go up that mountain of land investing with Scott. He's done it thousands of times. And you know what that tuition is going to cost? Nothing. You're going to make it back 180 days or less guaranteed. You literally have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. But your first step is schedule a call. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training, and make sure that this is right for you and get the details. Eric Peterson, what is your tip of the week? Right. I think this one turns out to be a, a perfect fit for today's topic. Um, it's called landingpage.fyi. And what it is, it's a checklist or a resource for everything you could possibly need to set up your deal of the week in landing page campaigns. Um, it starts off with some, some related articles about landing pages and, and why you should use them. It moves on to tell you how to register a domain, where you can build landing pages, um, and it just keeps going. Um, it's a pretty helpful resource of all the tools you need for that. So Eric, uh, it says here, design a logo. Do you have no. any logo recommendations? There are certain steps we can skip, right? Like flight school students, we would tell them, hey, you don't need to design a logo. You know, just move on. You don't need to build a brand right now. You need to buy and sell land. But there, there are useful items in the checklist, and there's some things that you can overlook. But um, overall, I think it was a, a good resource to take a look at. All right, fantastic. I mean, there's there's a lot of really cool uh, sites in here if you, if you want to geek out, mm -hmm. um, for sure. Pretty cool. I don't know. Tate Litchfield, good tip. I like it. I think wow. uh, yeah, I think this is helpful. Depending on where you're at, it's helpful. Yeah, this is good. Wow. All right. Fantastic. Um, well, I want to thank the listeners. I want to remind them that the only way that we'll be able to cajole Eric Peterson to ever give another tip of the week is if you do us three favors. You got to follow us. Uh, you got to rate, review the podcast. Send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send for free the $97 wholetailing course, How to Double Your Money, 30 Days or Less. Eric Peterson, are we good? We're great. Tate, are we good? Yep. Very good. Thanks. Scott Bossman? We're great. Mike Zeno? Perfect. All set. Great. All right. All right. Well, let's do this. One, two, three. Let's let let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right. Thanks, everybody. That was pretty good, actually. What do you think? I think it might have been a little boot camp fatigued, honestly. I think it's on my end. I think we're tired. All right. No, no, no bonus material. Let's just go take naps. We're tired from the weekend. We're, we're not. We're not. We're not used to this. Uh, what did you say? What did you say over the weekend? You're like, Mark's not used to this. This is. He's working. Yeah, I said. What are you going to do like, when we when we have a live boot camp in August? What are we going to do? Snacks. We're really going to be tired. We're going to be. We're going to be napping during the day. <laughs> Lots of snacks. Snacks, napping. Um, Tate Scott. Uh, I talked to Scott Todd a little bit this morning. He's like, what? What happened to the? the Langy uh, board game. I'm like, yeah, we got to talk to Tate about that. 
Oh, yeah. We should make that happen. We could play that at That's boot camp. Idea. Game night. Game night. How fun would that be? Write that down. Yeah. Can your passive income exceed your fixed expenses? Sounds fun. You get, we'll, go do, we'll do land arbitrage, wholesale deals, retail deals. Um, oh, your, did your deed get rejected? Go back to start. Right? I like it. Not using a, a simplifile county? Go back two spaces. You're, you're wasting too much time. Did your yeah, intake could, did your could intake manager work. quit? Show us your systems. What was your process? Have your systems in place, your processes? Go up two spaces. Don't have your systems and processes? Go back to start. <laughs> and that's just on the off the cuff. Can you imagine if we really thought about this? You're what giving you your right? idea away. Someone's going to steal it, Mark. I have an abundance mentality. Let them. <laughs> Let them. I'm not afraid at all. I I'm, putting on, I'm putting on my Mike Zeno cap. I'm going towards that fire. I'm not afraid. All right. And on that, I'm going to go listen to Eminem. I'm not afraid. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. See ya. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.